everybody, and welcome to another episode of Cooking with Lily and Generoso. I'm Lily. I'm Generoso. And because we are in post-Thanksgiving weekend, I am going to make curry. I think that's mostly because after the richness of the Thanksgiving meal, I want something that is still a little bit rich, but something that is a little bit spicier. And so we're craving curry because it's a little bit cooler here. So we're going to make gariga, which is essentially just chicken curry. Uh, the most traditional version is made with goat and you are welcome to do that as well. Uh, there are versions that are made with uh, beef as well, but we ate a lot of beef yesterday, mm. so we are going to go with good old chicken. Um, you can use any cut of chicken, of course. Um, older recipes will often use um, kind of a picnic pack of chicken, so your legs and your thighs and um, half breast. We're just going with boneless white meat chicken today, just because we want to have an illusion of health. So let's look at all of the ingredients. So we have about two and a half pounds of uh, white meat chicken. Uh, we're going to cut those up into bite-sized pieces and marinate them very shortly, pretty much immediately after we finish doing this ingredient list. I have three stalks of lemongrass. Um, this is mostly just the white and the light green part. Um, we've cut them into almost like penne looking shapes. All we're going to do is we're going to take actually our meat tenderizer and we're going to hammer them to open up the flavor and then we're going to throw them into our broth. We have two, uh, two bolts of garlic via the Rafi family. We always send much love to the Rafi family. We have about an inch and a half chunk of ginger. Again, I'm going to mince a small amount of it, but I'm actually going to leave a big chunk of it to uh, stew with the curry. We have two small shallots, an onion, four red potatoes. You could use any potato you like. I like the texture of red a little bit better. Um, it is true that these reds will probably break up a little bit more in the curry. I don't mind that so much because I think that's delicious. Uh, if you don't want them to break up so much in your curry, you can go with a russet, of course. And we have two carrots. Um, that's traditionally the vegetables that you put into the curry. Of course, you can do modifications as well. I sometimes like even topping off my curry with spinach. And we may do that off camera when we actually go and eat this. Um, so in terms of dry goods, we have some crushed red pepper. We have sea salt. We have bay leaves, which is something that I pretty much never use. Um, and we have cayenne. We have curry powder. So this is oriental curry, curry powder. What you basically want is a curry powder that takes a mix of uh, turmeric, some coriander, and fenugreek. That's kind of the big thing. Um, you definitely want to make sure that there's some fenugreek. And then um, some other ingredients as well. You can use s and I've seen people use three bells. This is the one that we always had when I was a kid. Um, I have some sambal chili. And I have some black pepper, of one can of coconut milk, of our friend fish sauce as usual, and we have a carton of chicken broth to allow all the curry to stew in. So we're going to do a little bit of prep, but before we do anything, we're going to go ahead and just chop up the chicken, and then I'll show you how to marinate it uh, before we get to all the root vegetables and stuff. See you soon. So Generoso has kindly cut up all the chicken into bite-sized pieces. Now we are going to go ahead and marinate it going to do is take about three spoonfuls of this really beautiful curry. I'm doing about three because I like my curry a little bit strong. As do I. You don't have to do three. All right. And then now we're going to take our cayenne and put about a teaspoon. Perfect. And then put about a teaspoon of crushed red pepper. Oh, this one is not open. I will, by the magic of editing and television, we will we will replace it with one that is already open. That was our mistake. We're gonna put about a teaspoon of crushed red pepper in here. Again, this is a total preference thing. If you don't want it as hot, you don't need to put the crushed red pepper in there. I'm going to take some of my sambal chili. I'm going to put about a spoonful. Wow, mm. this is hot. Yeah, I, don't, I think it's a nice contrast to the um, creaminess of coconut milk. Mm. I'm going to take some black pepper. Got it. And probably about a teaspoon as well. And then about a teaspoon of sea salt. And just a tiny bit more for good measure. 
and then we'll do one full rotation around the bowl of fish sauce. Okay. Right? And then you just want to mix this all up and make sure that the curry powder and all the spices nicely coat up all of your pieces of chicken. So we'll let this marinate for a minimum of 30 minutes. Um, again, if you want this to be even more flavorful, you can do it overnight. That's totally, totally fine. Um, and in the meantime, as we let this all marinate, uh, we're going to go ahead and finish up the rest of prep. So we'll see you in about 30 minutes. Right, so we've done a lot of prep. So Jean has nicely minced the onions, cut up the carrots into little chips, probably like about a third of an inch thick. We've cut up the uh, potatoes into slices. Um, I have minced the shallots and a little bit of the ginger. Most of it we've actually left in these solid big pieces that we're just going to throw in the soup. I've gone ahead and taken my meat tenderizer and I've uh, kind of crushed up the lemongrass in order to get the fragrance out. And then I've minced the garlic. So now what we're going to do while we're still waiting for our chicken to marinate, we're actually going to fry up the potatoes so that they get a little bit of char and crunch on the edge of them so they don't fall completely apart into a starch in the curry itself. So we have a pan nicely heated with plenty of oil. We're just going to put our potatoes in there. Again, you want to just make sure that there's a little bit of brown on the edges of these potatoes. This is also an opportunity to give them a little bit of flavor as well. So what we're going to go ahead and do is just put a tiny bit of salt. Again, probably just less than a teaspoon on these potatoes. The potatoes are like sponges. All right. So we'll just fry these up until they have a little bit of a golden brown on them and uh, we, by the time we're done, our chicken should be ready to start making our curry with. Alright, so we fried up our potatoes until the edges are a little bit golden brown. Some of them broke apart of course, but that's totally fine because we're going to actually add the potatoes a little bit more towards the end of the cooking process anyway. So I have heated the oil in the soup pan and I'm going to put in my Basically what we're going to do is we're going to put all of the aromatic parts, yeah. with the exception of the lemongrass and the ginger. Right, because they're too hard, right? Um, we want those to actually just uh, give fragrance to the soup. That's our garlic. And then we will be adding our minced shallot and uh, ginger. Wow. It's very intense smelling. Well, between that and the marinating curry, this is wild. <laughs> it's mostly because, you know, sometimes when you eat curries in restaurants, they don't always have the strongest flavor. Mm -hmm. And to me, it's always a little bit of a shame. Because I think curry should always be loud. Very loud. It should be. Alright, so what you want to do is just um, sweat these onions a little bit. We're going to add just a tiny bit of fish sauce, probably about a teaspoon. And again, we're going to go ahead and sweat these onions out and then I will see you in about a minute or so when we add in the chicken. So our onions have started to sweat out a little bit and that they're starting to become a little bit more translucent. And what we're going to go ahead and do is just add in our chicken. It's been marinating for about 40 minutes now. Yep. I admire the amount of chicken you're using. Yes, because we are going to be eating this for the whole week. Yes. Go ahead and give us a nice pop. Into the onion. You want oil to get off some of the uh, chicken. Feel free to add oil as well. Because you don't want the chicken to stick too badly to the pan. Alright, and at this point in time, we're going to go ahead and add in probably about a half a cup of chicken broth. Give this a nice pulse. Alright, we're going to 
put a lid on this and let this cook on um, medium heat for about 10 minutes and then we'll add more chicken broth and then a little bit more curry powder actually and let it stew for about 20 minutes and then we'll finish it all off with the coconut milk. So we'll see so you soon. Our chicken is nicely cooking. Some of the liquid's been released from the meat itself and then there's the chicken broth in there as well. So I'm gonna do at this point. Go ahead and add basically almost all of my chicken broth that's left. We wanna make sure that the liquid covers up all the chicken. All right, give that a nice stir. And at this point in time, we'll take our ginger chunks and then our um, tenderized lemongrass sticks. Put them in. And then you will also put in two bay leaves. And remember, you never, ever, ever want to eat bay leaves. You want to fish them out. And we'll be fishing out the ginger and the um, lemongrass as well from this. Give another stir. And then, just for a little bit extra spice, just going to add a half of a spoonful of curry powder. A little bit more. Give another stir. And where's the heat at right now, Lily? The heat's right at a happy medium. All right. And then I'm also going to go ahead and put my carrots in at this point too, so that it'll be they will be nice and soft. Boom, boom, boom. Are the potatoes closer to the end? Yes, we're gonna put the potatoes a little closer to the end because we've actually already fried them, and um, I don't want them to get too mushy and then make this into a little bit of a uh, more of a paste type curry which if it happens to you it's no big deal because it's still going to be delicious right so i'm going to go ahead and put my lid on it leaving a little bit of space open so some of the water can evaporate we're going to turn it down just a little bit more to like a medium lowish going to set our timer about 30 minutes and we will see you in 30 minutes when this is ready to what we'll go ahead and do is we're going to fish out essentially all of the big uh, spices and then we're going to finish off everything with the coconut milk which will add a nice beautiful creaminess so we'll see you in 30 minutes and our curry is stir or has been stewing and I've gone ahead already and pulled out all of the lemongrass and the ginger and the bay leaf uh, again, you don't want to eat those big pieces. Those are just used to actually flavor the broth. At this point in time, I'm going to go ahead and take our potatoes, put them on in. Just a nice stir. So this is definitely more of a stew. Um, that's the way I've always preferred it. If you want it to be a little bit thicker, you could use less chicken broth, and you could also add a little bit of cornstarch um, slurry to this uh, broth base as well. And then we are going to add our coconut milk. We're gonna go ahead and just put in the whole can. I love coconut milk. Let's do why. Give us one nice big stir. That smells so aromatic. It is really. I would say that in terms of smells, it's probably one of my favorite smells. Just put a lid on this. Again, this is now we're just basically finishing this off. I'm actually going to turn up the heat a tiny bit and just let this finish off for about five minutes. And in the meantime, I'm going to scoop some brown rice. That's what we're serving uh, the curry with today. Um, you could totally serve it with white rice, of course, and also rice noodles as well. So we will see you soon when we're ready. So our curry's all done. And we've put a bed of brown rice underneath in this bowl and just serve it with a big spoon. And we have made a giant pot of it. That'll be a bunch of meals for the week. So enjoy your carica. I hope it's nice and warm and delicious this winter.